What is going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get types working with Apollo client. So if you recall from last video, we're doing a use query and getting some data. But if you notice that data has a type of any, so when we try to access it, it doesn't tell us what fields this object contains and there's no auto completion. And we're basically left to just guess or just remember what it has and it's just inconvenient and could lead to very silly bugs so in this video we're going to fix that problem and luckily there's a tool called graphql code gen which makes it very easy to get types working with apollo client so i'm going to use these commands here to get started so the first thing you need is to actually have graphql installed into your project then you're going to need to install two dev dependencies one of them is ts node because we're using typescript and the other one is the graphql cogen cli the next thing that we need to do is actually write down our operations in a dedicated dot graphql file so right now we have our query just written here as a string um, we have to change that so over here in our modules in our graphql folder i'm going to make a folder called queries and in this Folder, I'm going to make a file called test.graphql like so and I'm just going to make a query called test and it's just going to do test and pass in that argument as true all right and so now we're ready to get started so it's pretty simple all we need to do is yarn graphql dash cogen init and it's going to give us a questionnaire to complete so here you press space to select an option. For now, all we need is application built with React and you press enter to continue. Then we need to tell Cogen where our schema is. Now you could pass in localhost or URL, but in our case, we want this generation to work even when we're offline. So I'm just gonna pass in the actual path to my schema file, which is at modules slash GraphQL slash schema.ts. Our operations are located at modules slash GraphQL, or in this case, we can just do yeah, slash GraphQL and then star star slash star dot GraphQL. Here we keep this as, as it has. It has React Apollo already selected for us. If it doesn't have it for you, you, just press space to select these three right here. And the output, we want it to be at generated slash graphql.tsx you press no for this and enter so the command to generate our types we want to just name it generate and it's going to do everything for us now since we're using typescript we need to actually go in this code gen ymo file and here we need to put require and then here we put ts-node slash register and this is going to let us link to our schema.ts file using ts node okay so now we need to run yarn so it can install all of these plugins that we specified and so now i'm going to go in our package json and i'm going to create a script i'm going to name this script predev and it'll be yarn run generate so now every time we run our development server before it runs it's going to generate all the types that we need for our schema that way our types for our operations are always up to date and we could also do it for pre-build because why not so now when we've done yarn run dev it should generate the types for us and then start our server so now we can go in our index.tsx and we can get rid of this here and instead of using the use query hook, we use the new hook that has types built in, which is the use, and then the name of our operation, which is test query, just like so. And then now when you do data dot, you have types and everything set up for you. And so down here, when we're doing the query on the server, we can get rid of this. And the, also, the other cool thing is that we have access to the string, like, Basically, what we had typed out before the string or this right here, it saves it for us so we can access it. So it'll be the name of your operation and document. 
And so now when we head over to our home page, everything's working as before. And if you recall from last video, we're doing server side rendering. So we're not actually uh, doing a request on the client. Now let's say I want to change this to false and regenerate my types. Well, at the moment it wouldn't work. So I could just restart my server. It'll generate the types again. And now when I refresh the page, here it says false. So as you can see, it's a very easy process to just generate the types for every operation. And we're going to be using this going forward whenever we're using Apollo client.